Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Sean with another Tesla video and in this one I want to talk about Tesla's batteries and how they're designed to last a really really long time Unless you do these three things that I have unfortunately done over the 142,000 miles that I have on my car now which has caused my battery to fail and need a replacement from Tesla so listen up to Uncle Sean we're gonna have a heart-to-heart -heart on some things that you should not do with your battery based on my personal experience so you can avoid needing to replace your battery and therefore allowing that battery to last a really long time. So let me give you a little bit of background on my usage of my car. I've got a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack in my Model S and over the course of the last couple of years, I've driven about 130,000 miles. So I picked up the car used at 16,000 miles, three years old. I really put the car to work. My day job is residential real estate and it has me going all over Denver. And of course we take some trips to the mountains for leisure and pleasure as a family, but mostly it's real estate miles. Now because this is a smaller battery, it has caused me to need to charge often. And so what I started doing pretty soon after I got the car was charge to 100%. And in a typical day when things are busy and I've got several appointments, I'll usually find myself driving between 150 miles to maybe 200 miles, which requires me to take a stop and charge. If I know I'm going to have a busy day, which is a lot of days, I'll charge my car up to 100%. And if I'm driving a lot, I'll usually have to stop at a supercharger to get some quick juice. Now, this has had a negative impact on my battery personally, which I believe has caused the battery to degrade faster. So I wanna talk about three things that Uncle Sean has done that you should definitely not do. And if you're in the market for an electric vehicle, these are gonna be three things that will help your battery last long and be a healthy battery. So let's get into the first one which is charging to 100% state of charge on a regular basis. Now, if you've ever charged to 100% and gotten into the car, Tesla provides a message that says that charging to 100% state of charge should only be reserved for long trips or long distances, ideally for road trips. The car is not designed to charge to 100% on a regular basis. The second thing that you should definitely not do is run the battery down below, let's say 20 or 30% state of charge. This too has an impact on how many cycles you actually get out of that battery. So the sweet spot really, I think, is uh, to keep the battery between 30% and 80%. The third thing that reduces the longevity of the health of the battery is exposing the battery pack to high temperatures and high voltage. And whenever you supercharge, there's high voltage going into that car, which increases the battery temperature. And that's probably why you hear those fans running while you're supercharging. It's, it's trying to cool the battery down and circulate the coolant that's inside of the battery pack. If you don't need fast charging on a regular basis, your battery will naturally last longer. But Tesla does not do a really good job at showing owners how that battery is degrading over time. The makeshift way to do that at the moment is for owners to measure 100% charge brand new and then periodically charge it up to 100% and see what the difference is between brand new and at the periodic incremental charges. The other way I've seen people recommend to measure the degradation in the battery is to charge it to 100% and then drive it all the way down to zero and measure how many kilowatt hours were used in that time period, comparing that also to when it was brand new. The best way I found for owners to really diagnose the health of the battery is to utilize an app called TM Spy. The app gives you some real-time insight into the data of the battery as well as other data points of the car. Tesla providing this sort of insight about their car could help people better take care of their car. Now someone might say that, oh, if Tesla provides an eight year limited mile warranty, then it really doesn't matter, does it? I think that that's just a poor way of looking at things. I think we all, as owners of electric vehicles, should be good stewards. 
and make sure that you're not frequently doing the three things that I mentioned, as well as making sure that you take the car in once a year for an annual checkup. This will allow you less inconvenience because your battery won't do what it did for me a couple of weeks ago when I was driving home. If you haven't watched that video, I'll make sure to link it down below. The basic summary is that I was driving home, I had 34 miles of range, was about 10 miles away from my house. The screen said the car was powering down to find a, a safe place to pull over. Now, unfortunately, this is an all too familiar your site for me because this was the fourth time that that this has happened but never with this much range left when I spoke with Tesla the following Monday they ran a remote diagnostic on the battery and did determine that it does need to be replaced the reality of my personal situation is that the 60 kilowatt hour battery pack is probably not the best pack for me I need something more and ideally something above 300 miles so what I have to decide now once this battery does get replaced is do I keep the car with most likely a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack that they'll upgrade me to or should I trade it in and get something with a little bit more range like the Model 3 or the Model S or X of course if I do the S or X I'm spending a lot more and I'm always cost conscious of that being a self-employed business owner this brings up one last topic that I wanted to mention that many of you have asked about which is what is the cost of a battery out of pocket or out of warranty I did a little bit of research and the cost as of August 2018 is between $15,000 and $20,000. Now that cost has significantly fallen over time and I think it will continue to do the same. So in another five years from now, the cost of a battery will probably be significantly less. And I were, if I were just to put a wild guess on what that might be, I'm going to say sub $5,000 in five years for a battery pack the size of Tesla's. That wraps up this video. The moral of the story is do what Uncle Sean says, not what Uncle Sean does. My practices should not be a justification for you to treat your battery pack this way and thus resulting in the need to replace the battery. It's terribly inconvenient and could potentially be costly if you're past that eight year warranty. I hope you found this informative. For those that are researching whether to buy an electric vehicle or not, I highly recommend it. There are so many positive reasons why it's better to buy an electric vehicle over an internal combustion engine car. And for those that have been following my journey, I hope it's provided some additional insight to you on where things stand. Thanks so much for watching and see you on the next video.